morning, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for taking the time to come out today. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for what you do for our country. It's really important. You have a really positive impact on the country, and I don't know how it's running with all of you here, actually, which is... <laughs> uh, so I'm a, a recovering government CIO. I was CIO at Pentagon uh, for OSDC3I. Uh, and uh, also CTO Army Perscom, so I've uh, sort of been in and out of the government. Uh, so I feel your pain, and I, I know the complexity of an ever-changing world and, and uh, operating in those environments. I run all of the storage systems for Amazon, along with the streaming systems and all of the uh, transactional and the messaging systems as well. Uh, one of the products that we have in the storage environment is the Snowball, which has been quite popular uh, amongst our customers that I'll be talking about today on, on how to move uh, large scale or large volumes of data into AWS without the, uh, uh, the load on the network that often occurs when you need to do that. So one of our customers, actually, it's uh, one of the customers that's a government customer that does satellite imagery came to me and said, geez, I, I really want to move my 250 petabytes uh, out of my legacy environment and be able to shut my data centers down quickly, but it would take me many, many years to run that over the network, even at the best network loads. Uh, they're already moving their, their new imaging onto AWS. How do I move all of that old imaging that I need to be able to search on AWS in a, a reasonable amount of time? Uh, and uh, I got to thinking about this and what the best way to do it. I took a look at their network topology and some of the challenges that they had uh, and uh, uh, sort of led me back, you know, that you, know, you just keep reinventing the past, right? That's a, we're, all, we're all just reinventing the mainframe over and over again, right? That's a, a, a part, part of what we do, right? About a 25-year cycle. Uh, and I thought about that old story of, uh, you know, nothing can beat the bandwidth of a station wagon full of tapes, right? Do you remember that? You, I'm sure you all, all heard that. Uh, and how could we actually move that amount of data for them without overloading the network and everything else? So uh, that was, the, you know, so much at AWS is about listening to our customers, and that was the genesis of the Snowball device and, and the Snowball service that we have today. Uh, the requirement was for it to be incredibly secure, uh, a lot of this data, like the data we're moving for uh, uh, some of our banking customers and others, uh, require tremendous security on it. Uh, and uh, it, I also work with the intelligence agencies a lot, so I wanted it to be uh, nation state safe. In other words, it could uh, withstand a nation state attack. Uh, it had to be fast. You know, how could you pump the data onto the device as quickly as possible? Uh, very simple to use, so point it at a file, click and go. Uh, and uh, uh, don't worry about all of the, you know, putting it in and out of boxes and carts and all those other kinds of things, uh, and, and be petascale, uh, petabyte scale, and be very, very cheap to do. Uh, and uh, Andy, our CEO, as, as Steve mentioned, uh, one of the things that, about Andy, and I encourage you to ask him this question uh, uh, when you have your Q&A with him, is every Friday he has the CEO of our company sits down with the CISO and all the executive engineering team leaders and goes over all security issues every Friday. Uh, and I can't think, like what I was OSDC, you know, uh, 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 we didn't have the sec def sit down with us every Friday and look at all the cyber issues, right? I mean, think about that. How many of you would love to have that level of attention from your CEO? And when I worked at Sun Microsystems, Scott McNeely didn't sit down every Friday and look at all the security issues. I mean, it, it's really focused. And, and he pointed his finger at me. He said, if we're going to ship a bunch of disks around, you have to make sure that no one can ever put it in the wrong box uh, and no one can ever put the wrong label on it. So it is its own box, right? You don't need to put it in a box, right? And it has an automated shipping label on it. And those are some of the security features around it. So it decides where it's going and sets the label itself so you don't have to. Uh, and that's some of the key features of the Snowball. Uh, the other three requirement we had was very strong chain of custody uh, so that customers could, could watch their data from the time it starts ingestion and as it moves through the shipping system uh, uh, and to delivery for ingestion and then watch it on the ingestion component. Uh, the Snowball also uh, hashes the data on ingestion and uh, that does a hash when it extracts the data to ensure the data hasn't changed during shipment and that all your data was arrived uh, uh, correctly, because, you know, nothing could ever get messed up uh, on a disk, right? <laughs> so, so making sure that that's all in good shape. Um, the uh, cryptographic keys are not stored on the device. The cryptographic keys stay in uh, the cloud management system. Uh, so never is a key on the device during shipment or while the data is moving. So the data is all encrypted before it touches the snowball, and it's only decrypted after it's removed from the snowball. Um, 
you know, if you think of it, it it's designed in many ways just like you would design a, 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 an IPsec tunnel or something like that where you're running over a hostile network. So you encrypt before you move, the keys are kept here, the data moves across the network, and then it's decrypted on the other side. Um, it needs to operate in areas with very limited bandwidth. It, it turns out there's a lot of places on Earth where, where high volumes of data are collected, uh, like radar systems, seismic data, uh, oil, you know, oil fields, mines, uh, 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 out in the field in DOD, on ships, where there are, are poor bandwidth requirements. So it needs to be able to operate in those kind of areas, in addition to being able to move data from a data center and shut a data center down quickly. Um, a lot of our customers uh, have their data stored, obviously, in file systems. And the, the, the newer generations of storage is really focused on object-based storage. That's the way things have evolved. Uh, so uh, how do you convert from that legacy file system storage into object-based storage? And the Snowball does that automatically for you. So as you, you point it at your file system, it'll convert it to object-based storage. Now, you can always convert it back into file semantics on the other end on AWS if you would like. Uh, and our customers look at it, a lot of them, as a way to shut their data center down more quickly and increase their ROI, uh, get off their legacy storage requirements. So this is what the Snowball looks at, looks like. Uh, it'll handle uh, 200 G impacts, uh, so it's a, 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 a pretty robust device. You can, uh, literally one of the ways we test it is we drop it from a second story uh, balcony uh, 80 times on all six sides onto concrete. <laughs> okay, that's one of the test criterias for it uh, uh, to handle that kind of impact. Uh, and uh, along with, you know, so, so it needs to be able to handle all the rigors of being shipped or airdropped or any of those kinds of things. Uh, the e-ink label is here on the front. Uh, so when you order the Snowball, the label changes automatically to your address and then uh, an, an RPC call is made to whatever shipper you've provided uh, and they come and they pick it up. Uh, because it can be left outside, uh, it has to be rainproof and dustproof, so that's another component of it. You can see uh, on the hatch there, there's an O-ring that seals as it closes and it locks in there and there's a uh, a dust filtering system as well. Uh, it, in addition to that, it's got three layers of tamper resistance and tamper alarms on it, so if it's tampered in, in, in flight, uh, we'll know about it. Uh, and it has about a, a 10 gigabit uh, uh, per snowball ingestion rate. Uh, and you can run multiple snowball clients to pump it into a single snowball if your storage system cannot produce 10 gigabits per second, which a lot of them can't actually. Uh, and again, it's encrypted from end to end. So the way it works is you go into our console, and this is available uh, in uh, uh, the uh, government cloud today, uh, and you say, I wanna move this file system. You, you download uh, the client software, install it on one of your servers, it could be Windows, Linux, or Mac, uh, and you point it at the file system you wanna move. It'll actually run a test for you and tell you how long it'll take to move that file and tell you how many snowballs you need. Uh, once you've done that, you can go ahead and order your snowballs. Uh, uh, the data uh, goes from your storage device through the client software, which is NFS mountable, uh, and uh, the encryption in occurs at that time along with the hashing, uh, and then it goes into the snowball. So the, it, it never touches the snowball unless the data is fully encrypted. Uh, and then uh, as a device fills, the address label will just automatically change to one of our ingestion centers. Uh, it'll make a call to uh, your shipper of choice and let, let them know that, that it needs to be picked up. Now for classified movements uh, uh, of data, and it, it's getting certified for that for operation in C2S, for example, uh, that's handled with a classified courier, so the shipping label won't be of much value in that case. Uh, but for unclassified shipments, it just runs through a standard courier. Uh, the data is moved and you can watch it as it gets scanned in and moved from place to place. In the unclassified world, there's actually wireless tracking on it. In the classified world, that is disabled. Uh, uh, as it arrives to the ingestion center, uh, the data is all fully encrypted. Uh, all of the firmware is hashed uh, previous to the shipment as well. So we rehash the firmware to make sure the firmware hasn't changed and just in case we reload all the firmware anyway before we pull anything off the device. Uh, once the firmware is reloaded, uh, then we extract the encrypted data, 
uh, uh, as it gets decrypted, it gets hashed uh, as it goes into S3. Uh, and then once it's all in S3 and hashed and validated that it's arrived there securely, and you go in and take a look at your data and say, yeah, it looks good to me. Uh, at that point in time, uh, uh, the snowball goes through and is cleaned out uh, uh, for the next uh, customer to be used at that, at that point. And we'll talk about how we do that as well in more detail in, in future slides. Um, so it, it gives you the ability to move large volumes of data. The current snowball is uh, 80 terabytes uh, per run. Um, uh, you can run them in parallel. Uh, so 10 snowballs is the equivalent of a 100 gig uh, uh, connection. Uh, so if you ever, gee, I'd love to have a 100 gig connection in a lot of places. You can get it with uh, a, a parallel operation of snowballs. Just to give you an idea of, of the time it takes to move data like this, uh, those are some of the examples. So if you have a 150 megabits connection, uh, it's going to take you 126 days to move 80 terabytes if you only use 25% of your network, or 42 days if you use 75% of your network. Uh, if you've got a one gig connection, and this is one of these areas that a lot of people ask me, well, we had large customer, Sony, uh, comes and said, wow, I want to move all my data quickly, can I use Snowballs? And I took a look and they had uh, four 100 gig connections. I said, just use the network, right? I mean, for, for, for those kinds of things, use the network. Uh, I've had other customers that have a 100 gig connection and they want to move 20 petabytes of data, but they said, I just don't want to, I, I don't want to load, I got other things to do with my network, so I'm going to use the Snowball. Uh, so it's really a good way. And Snowball can be used for exporting data as well. A lot of our customers use it to distribute data to their customers that don't have a uh, good network uh, available to them. Uh, and they don't want to have to worry about shipping things. You know, Amazon, we do kind of know a little bit about shipping stuff. So <laughs> Snowball uh, uh, fits well into our, our uh, uh, capability there. And again, if you wanted to move, say, 240 terabytes of data, uh, this gives you an idea of how long it would take. So imagine on a 150 megabit connection, you're talking 600 days. Uh, uh, and so Snowball, it's about a week to move the data uh, when you include ingestion and shipping in that. So it's got uh, AES-256 encryption, uh, multi-layer encryption on it with multi-keys. Uh, uh, like I said before, it's all encrypted before it even touches the Snowball. Uh, uh, and we really did build it uh, uh, to go through a nation state attack and we've had uh, intelligence agencies look at it. We've had uh, Steve's team who's very aggressive uh, uh, in, in doing pen tests and we've hired external pen test organizations to do it as well. Uh, on the outer layer here you can see there are uh, uh, tamper resistant screws uh, all around the outside here. There's a tamper wire on here. Uh, there's three layers of physical protection to protect it on impacts. Uh, and the reason it can take that kind of an impact uh, uh, in shipment. Um, and so, so your data is going to be pretty secure. Now, we don't recommend that you delete your local data until it's validated and hashed onto S3, and then you can move it to other places, right? So, so because, it, you know, the, there's always a chance something could happen. You know, a truck could run over it. It could fall out of an airplane. I mean, there, there's always those kinds of things. So uh, don't, don't expect to use the snowball as, oh, I copied my data, now I can delete it. Wait a week and wait till it's validated and then delete it. Right? So, so, so give it that extra time, uh, that time for shipment. Um, the strong chain of custody is, is guaranteed uh, by our shippers. Uh, we talked about the tamper resistant, but it also has uh, electronic tamper resistance as well. Uh, at the end, we use a NIST 800-88 media sterilization standard uh, for uh, sterilizing the data once uh, your data is removed. Uh, but your data was all encrypted with your key, heavily encrypted with your key anyway. Uh, so so it, it, it's pretty secure. Uh, most of the CISOs who have reviewed this in the government have been very, very happy with how it operates. Uh, so what does it cost? It's uh, 250 bucks uh, for uh, an 80 terabyte NAS device, so that's not so bad. Uh, uh, basically, we, it does not include the shipping days and the 10 days you get to use it. Uh, the shipping is, is, uh, uh, is on us, if you like. You, you pay for shipping, but that time it, it's in flight is on us. Uh, when it arrives, you have 10 days to connect and load your data. If you need to keep it for longer than that, it's just $15 per day uh, while you continue to, to uh, uh, operate it. Uh, and then, uh, just like any other AWS uh, service, it's just like as if you're connecting to a network as far as data charges go. Uh, Snowball's been quite popular. Uh, the demand has been through the roof. Uh, snowballs have been shipped uh, the equivalent of 50 times around the Earth so far, if you add them up. Uh, we have uh, 
Uh, we've moved one and a half billion objects and counting onto uh, S3. Uh, so it's, it's growing at a, a, a pretty good rate. Uh, they're being used uh, for on, on airports for collection of jet engine data. Uh, they're being used in uh, oil service organizations like uh, uh, GE Oil and Gas. Uh, each time that device there, it's called a pig that goes through and cleans a pipe out. It also x-rays a pipe and checks the pipe for seam leakage and other things like that. It collects 25 terabytes of data. Uh, every aircraft flight, on average, each engine generates 40 terabytes of data. Uh, there's all sorts of issues going on uh, with radar collection and video collection, security camera collection. Uh, it's starting to be used by movie studios uh, and TV studios for uh, downloading their data and shipping it back for AWS for transcoding and processing. Um, it's being used uh, in mines. It's being used in farmers' fields to collect high-resolution drone data. Uh, it's being used. Uh, 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 in, uh, uh, also in many, many data centers to uh, uh, aggregate uh, and ship data so that they can more quickly turn off their data centers and improve their ROI. Uh, so it's a pretty broad spectrum of use. Like I said, it's amazing how many places there are where a lot of data is collected uh, and very little uh, network is available, like seismic vessels, uh, uh, anti-submarine warfare data collection. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff being done uh, uh, where the snowball is being used to ship, ship data back. Uh, so recently, changes to the snowball, uh, we've continued to increase re uh, the ease of use and adding more and more features to the snowball client. Uh, we went from a 50 terabyte unit, which you could still get, the 50 terabyte units are $200 instead of $250 per cycle. Uh, the 80 terabyte units is a 60% capacity increase. Uh, uh, we also added export because a lot of our customers, you always get this sort of worry, well, well, how do I get my data out of AWS if I wanted to move back on-prem or I wanted to use AWS for disaster recovery? That's another thing that a lot of our customers use Snowball for is they'll back up into AWS and if they'll, they'll use it right now mostly testing on disaster recovery. So they'll order a bunch of Snowballs, bring the data back and restore it up into their data center if they decide they want to remain on-prem. Uh, we've continued to deploy more and more regions. Uh, um, uh, lately, you know, like GovCloud is up, San Francisco, Dublin, Sydney, places like that. The other thing that's really interesting to me is almost all the storage vendors, you name them, are integrating Snowball into their products. So uh, Commvault, for example, has got Snowball integrated in their backup solution, but uh, look for announcements from all your major storage vendors where you'll be able to go right into your vendor console and say, I want to back up to AWS, Click Snowball as an option. It'll automatically order the Snowball for you. The Snowball will arrive. You can plug it right into their system. They'll encrypt the data on the way in, and then you can watch it right, right through your storage platform. You can watch it as it goes through shipment and arrival and upload into AWS. So uh, I, I, I've been fascinated how many companies are involved with that. We're launching a, uh, an SDK that will allow you to integrate it into your processes. We have a lot of customers that are using Snowball, like I said, for distribution of data. So they're building the SDK. and building Snowball right into their software, uh, which is kind of a physical device that can be pulled out. Um, uh, by the end of the year, we'll have it globally in every region. Um, uh, and then coming will be interesting things like the ability to uh, analyze your virtual machine environment, analyze your database environment, uh, and then automatically pull down databases and VMs onto the Snowball and re-instantiate them on the other side on AWS. So you can snapshot your data center, ship it to AWS, and bring it up virtually in AWS. Um, uh, also, uh, what's coming for Snowballs is the ability in, in the next version to do durable on-site stores, so basically clustered NASs uh, uh, where you pay a day rate for keeping the Snowball on-site. Uh, and Snowball is almost mil-spec already, so we've looked at whether we want to take it the rest of the way to full mil-spec. Uh, and Snowball today is uh, it's rainproof. It'll handle... Uh, hurricane force winds and rain and things like that, but you cannot submerge it. Uh, so, so the oil and gas industry, for example, has asked for a submergible snowball. <laughs> so it would be an underwater snowball. Uh, it's, it's looked at it being used also in aircraft, so I guess it'll be the AWS cloud in the clouds when that happens. I don't know, but <laughs> anyway, in interesting things happening with Snowball. Uh, so take a look at it if you need to move high volumes of data in places where the network won't support it uh, into the cloud. Thank you very much. <laughs>